Hello folks, Prasad Domla here and in this video I'll briefly talk about AWS Transit Gateway and I'll show you how to set up a Transit Gateway and attach uh, VPCs from multiple AWS accounts. So let's get started. So what is the Transit Gateway? It is a service from AWS which enables us to connect multiple VPCs and on-prem networks to a single gateway and set up transitive networking across these attached networks. It scales elastically based on the volume of network traffic and it operates in uh, layer three of the OSI model, meaning all the packets are sent to the next hop based on their uh, IP addresses. Without Transit Gateway, if you want to connect VPCs, you need to create peering connections between all the VPCs. And this peering connection is not transitive, meaning you cannot access peered VPCs through another peering connection. We should create VPC peering connection with every other VPC in your network. So this applies to on-prem networks as well. So we need to attach VPN to each individual VPC. With rapidly growing infrastructure requirements with hundreds or even thousands of VPCs, this setup is obviously time consuming and hard to manage. AWS Transit Gateway simplifies this drastically. You only need to create and manage a single central gateway and attach all the VPCs, VPNs, and even direct connect gateways to your Transit Gateway. Transit Gateway basically acts as a hub and we can centrally control traffic flow among all connected VPCs and VPNs and direct connect gateways. We can also create a pairing with Transit Gateways in another region and gain access to all the resources attached to that Transit Gateway. Before jumping into the demo, I would like to talk about uh, the terminology of Transit Gateway. First one is attachment. We need to create an attachment for each VPC, VPN or uh, direct connect gateway that we want to attach to Transit Gateway. Next, we have associations. Each attachment we create is associated with exactly one route table, and we can define all our routes in that associated route table. Route tables can be shared between attachments if we want to uh, use the same routes for all our attachments, but each attachment can have only one association, which will help us to manage our routes efficiently. We can have all common routes in the main route table and create separate route tables for specific attachments to control routing. So that's about association. And finally, we have propagation, which is basically route propagation to the route table. We can configure our attachments to propagate routes to one or more route tables. So when we attach a VPC or VPN to the transit gateway, the routes can be configured to propagate automatically to your uh, route tables. And both static and dynamic route tables are supported in transit gateways. Now let me show you how simple routing works with transit gateway. Let's consider we have three VPCs, VPC1, VPC2, and VPC3 with the subnet and corresponding subnet route table. As you can see, local CIDR range for each VPC is pointing to its local route, and the CIDR for other two VPCs are pointing to the transit gateway, which means all traffic destined from VPC1 to either VPC2 or 3 will go to transit gateway, which is the next hop. And transit gateway will have its own route table, and each VPC is attached to the same route table, which is the default route table. This is called the association. I showed just one transit gateway route table here, but we can have multiple route tables and associate each VPC to a different route table if required. But any VPC can be associated with only one route table as I mentioned earlier. In transit gateway route table, each route will be pointing to an attachment. It can be a VPC, VPN or a appearing attachment. And when the traffic arrives at transit gateway, the destination address will be matched with one of these uh, route entries and forwarded it to a respective uh, attachment. If none of the route entries are matched, the traffic will be dropped at the transit gateway. This is obviously a simple routing example, but you can imagine the possibilities of advanced routing setup between your VPCs and on-prem networks using centralized transit gateway route tables. Now let me talk about the demo environment we'll be setting up today. I'll use three of my AWS accounts for this demo. I'm calling this shared dev on prod. And I have a VPC in each of these AWS accounts in Sydney region. I created an EC2 instance in a private subnet in each of these uh, VPCs. We'll use these to uh, do a ping test to verify the connectivity. I created these VPCs and EC2 instances using Terraform templates. I'll leave the repo links in the description. I'll create my transit gateway in my shared account and share it with my dev and prod accounts. And I'll attach my three VPCs to the transit gateway and finally do a ping test to verify the connectivity. Please note that I don't have a site-to-site -site VPN to demo. So uh, I'll just stick with the VPCs for this demo, but the concepts of attachments or associations and propagations will be uh, identical. Let's now jump to the AWS console. 
I have my three AWS consoles open here, shared, dev, and prod, and each labeled in a different color for easy identification. And I have my uh, test Amazon Linux EC2 instance in each uh, AWS account. So let's create a transit gateway in my uh, shared account. I am in my shared AWS accounts VPC console. Navigate to transit gateways. I don't have any transit gateways in this account yet. So let's create one. I'll just call it as uh, my TGW and provide some description. For ASN, that is autonomous system number, we can leave it as AWS default number, which is 64512, or you can provide your own ASN from the private ASN range, which can be either 32-bit uh, or 64-bit uh, ASN. If you're creating peering with transit gateway in another region, make sure you use um, unique ASN for each of your transit gateway. Next, we have some checkboxes here. DNS support to enable DNS resolution. VPN ECMP support, that is equal cost multipath uh, routing support. Next, we have default route table propagation and default route table association, which automatically uh, associates or propagates new transit gateway attachments to the default route table. I'll keep all these options selected for this demo. Then we have an option to automatically accept cross account attachments. If you want to verify each cross account attachment manually, you can keep this unchecked and manually approve each attachment. I'll enable it for this uh, demo. So let's create this transit gateway. You'll immediately get the transit gateway ID. Initially, the gateway will be in pending state. It might take a couple of minutes for this to uh, complete. I'll pause the video here and get back when it's complete. The status is now available. Let me quickly show you the default route table. I'll tag it as uh, TGW default. And this table will be used as default association and propagation route table. As I mentioned earlier, we can create our own route tables if required. So let's attach our VPC to this uh, gateway. Navigate to transit gateway attachments and create an attachment. Select our uh, newly created transit gateway from the drop down. We have three options here, VPC, VPN and transit gateway peering connection from another region. I'll select VPC. I'll provide a name tag here and I'll call it shared VPC. I'll leave DNS support enabled and if required, you can enable IPv6 support as well. I don't need IPv6 for this demo, so I'll leave it unchecked. Next, we need to select our VPC. I'll select my only VPC here. And then we'll be asked to select the subnets. It is recommended to select at least two subnets for high availability, and we can select only one subnet per availability zone. I'll select my private subnet from each availability zone and create the attachment. Our attachment is now created. Let's close this window. Again, the attachment will be in pending state. I'll pause the video until it's available. It took a couple of minutes and it's in available state now. If we go back to our uh, route tables, we can see our associated VPC and uh, each attachment will have an attachment ID. We can see the same attachment under propagations and our VPC route is propagated with VPC CIDR block as source and the attachment ID as uh, destination. Now we need to follow the same process in our dev and prod AWS accounts. But our dev and prod accounts are not aware of this transit gateway created in shared AWS account. To make this transit gateway available to our dev and prod accounts, we need to share it with those accounts. We can share transit gateways and other supported resources using a service called um, Resource Access Manager. Let me navigate to Resource Access Manager console and create a resource share. I'll call this as my TGW share. And from resource type dropdown, you can see that we can share many types of resources here. Let's select transit gateways for our use case. And we can see our transit gateway listed here. Select that. And for principles, we can either provide AWS account numbers or uh, organization. I'll provide my dev and prod account numbers here. We can provide optional tags if required and create resource share. We have our share created and active. Before using this share, we need to accept it. So let's go to our dev account and navigate to resource access manager. You can see that we have one invitation here. Let's select that and accept. Now, if we go back to our transit gateways page, we should see it here and we can attach our VPC to this uh, transit gateway. So let's do that from transit gateway attachments. The process of attachment is same as we did in our shared account. We can select the gateway from the dropdown. 
Please note that the cross account transit gateway support only VPC attachments. You can only see VPC option here. I'll call it as dev VPC and select my VPC. Again, I'll select my private subnets from each uh, available D zone and create the attachment. If a transit gateway is configured to accept cross account attachments automatically, the state will go into pending state directly and then become available. If not, the initial state will be a pending acceptance and we need to accept the attachment from the account where we created this transit gateway. In our case, the shared account. I enable my transit gateway to auto accept cross account uh, attachments. So my attachment state is pending and it should be available in a couple of minutes. It's available now. Let's go back to our shared account and check the transit gateway. Please note that we won't have any transit gateway specific route tables in our dev account because all transit gateway routes are managed in our shared account where the transit gateway is created. We can see a new attachment here. Let's tag it as our dev VPC. And under route tables, we have a new association and propagation entries. And we have our new dev VPC route propagated automatically. I'll quickly perform the same steps from my prod AWS account. I'll speed up the video here. Okay, I have my prod attachment available now and we can see the route added for my uh, prod VPC as well. Now the last piece before testing the connectivity is to add routes to our subnet route tables where we created the EC2 instances to forward traffic to our newly created transit gateway. So let's do that now. So from my shared account, I'll navigate to my subnet route table. I have my EC2 instance in private subnet, so I'll add transit gateway uh, routes to my private subnet route table. Currently it just has the local route and uh, NAT gateway route. Let's add a new route for my uh, dev VPC CIDR, which is 10.3.0.0 slash 16. And for target, I'll select transit gateway and select my transit gateway ID. I'll add another route to my prod VPC. Let me add the routes in my dev and prod accounts as well. Okay, I updated all my uh, subnet route tables and pointed them to the transit gateway. We have now set up a full mesh network connectivity using transit gateway. Let's do a ping test from our EC2 instances to test the connectivity. I'm logged into my three EC2 instances, shared, dev and prod. Let me first ping dev instance from shared. Let me get my uh, dev instance IP. As you can see, we're able to uh, ping our dev instance from shared through transit gateway. We can do the same with prod instance as well. We were able to ping our prod instance. We can do this from other accounts as well. Let's ping from prod to dev. So we were able to ping these EC2 instances across VPCs through transit gateway. So that's the process of setting up a full mesh network across your AWS accounts using Transit Gateway. And you can control the routing centrally from Transit Gateway route tables. So that's it for this video. Hope you found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and see you in the next one.